Two months ago, I confirmed that Navi 22 was a around 200 watt card that clocked higher than a 6800 XT and was likely, although not 100% confirmed, to use a 192 bit bus and 40 compute units. And based on these specs, I concluded that AMD's 5700 XT successor, the 6700 XT, was likely to at least slightly exceed the 2080 Super while costing about the same as a 5700 XT. Now, I have more info, as you probably saw in the last video. Although in that last video, you would have noticed that I had mixed information when it came to performance estimates. And while I cannot give you an exact estimate just yet, I think I know enough to give you an idea of what's going on with the 6700 XT, who it's for, and what its place in the market will be. And what I will say right off the bat is that it's, of course, stronger than the 5700 XT. Of course it is. But it's unlikely to defeat the 3060 Ti decisively. So at least for now, I am not going to be playing up the upper estimates of what I heard and projected the performance of Navi 22 could be. This conclusion comes from a few updates from conversations with sources. First of all, talking to people in the professional side of AMD, I have indications that it's more Navi 22 is more of a solid successor to Navi 10 than something tears higher in performance. And remember, my professional side sources before were the ones that got me, as far as I'm aware, Ampere Quadro pictures before anyone else and the roadmap for GA 102 and 104 professional cards. You know, based on this roadmap too, I was told that AMD was positioning top Navi 21 to be not quite as good as the top A6000, but definitely in between that and a cut down GA 102 card. And so far, that's what we found Big Navi to perform like, pretty much exactly. So I guess with that in mind, I must communicate that they're telling me that Navi 22 based professional cards are being compared to cards that were already in the existing lineup. They're better than Navi 10, but they're not a full tier above everything they had before. And that is what they said Navi 21 was. Furthermore, I have another source telling me that AMD is concerned about the 3060 Ti hitting its $400 MSRP in quarter one. Now, look, I know it's not $400 right now. It's selling in volume above $450, which actually, let me just say that now. NVIDIA is firmly shipping far more 3060 Ti's than 3070s, and there's no evidence they have any intention of really fixing the 3080 supply issue, that they're sending those to miners and just focusing on the 3090 and mostly the 3060 Ti. I really do think this is evidence that NVIDIA is responding to what the full RDNA 2 lineup will be after it surprised them with its level of performance, that the volume of cards sold to gamers will probably be a 3070 Ti that cannibalizes the 3080, a 3080 Ti that cannibalizes the 3090 eventually, and then of course the 3060 Ti that's already cannibalizing the 3070. But this cannibalization did surprise AMD just a little bit, and so they are making their own adjustments in the background to what they plan to do with Navi 22 as well. And honestly, let's take a look at why AMD may have been a little caught off guard in response to NVIDIA's aggressive reshuffling of their lineup. If we look back at the internal presentations, here's one from Galax, a partner of NVIDIA, we can see that the 3070 was assumed to kind of look slightly weaker than the 2080 Ti. Uh, a month before it came out. And of course, the 3060 was communicated as equal to a 2080. So if you were AMD and you were preparing Navi 22, you probably would have said, well, okay, the 3070 is slightly below the 2080 Ti, the 3060 is about at a 2080. There's not a lot of room in there for something in between. And so, yeah, AMD has been surprised that not only has NVIDIA launched a 3060 Ti, but they've launched it so close to the performance of a 3070. But yeah, hopefully this reshuffling of NVIDIA's lineup will mean that Navi 21 prices will be forced to hit their MSRP in quarter one. God knows nothing is right now due to demand. But at the very least, 
it sounds like Navi 22 could end up as more of a budget option than anticipated. And actually, I'm starting to get all mixed up. Let me just go through my clear information on what I know about Navi 22. But first, I actually do have to get to an ad from a sponsor. Today's piece of content is sponsored by someone who wants to power your creativity. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like me, and maybe even my dog. She's pretty smart. Good girl. Sign up for Skillshare to obtain a membership with meaning that allows you to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are thousands of classes to choose from to enhance your creative skills. Subjects include e-commerce courses, graphic design, and even courses you may not have known you wanted to learn about, like artificial intelligence with Christian Howman. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and there are always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, and the first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Sign up for Skillshare today, a wonderful online community for following your passions and creativity. Okay, Navi22. This is, of course, adding far more info to the stuff I already confirmed earlier this week. Now, top Navi22 gaming, 40 CUs, which I was pretty sure of before, but not 100%. And then, of course, clock speeds a bit above the 6800 XT. Navi22 does have infinity cash based on what I am told, but all evidence to me suggests it's likely significantly less than Navi21. And... Just like Navi 21, it would not surprise me if the partner cards were clocked at the upper ends of these clock speeds or higher. Keep in mind, most of what I'm talking about here is based on the reference model for Navi 22. I can't be 100% sure of how much higher the AIB cards may perform. Just like, again, the AIB cards for the 6800 XT arguably wipe the floor with the 3080. Although I would not bet on hitting 3 gigahertz like some rumors are suggesting. Hey, if it does after overclocking, no one will be happier than me. But I do not think people should expect to hit 3 gigahertz on the coolers that come on these cards. Um, anyways, performance again, firmly above the 5700 XT. It's not going to trade blows with it. But unlikely to decisively defeat the 3060 Ti, which is about 10% weaker than a 2080 Ti in raw rasterization performance. Again, once I know an exact estimate, I'll say, but at the end of the day, I think this shows that this is at the lower end of my estimated performance range. And around 200 watts of power consumption for the reference model, as many people have been leaking for months, including me. And... 100% confirmed. Note it wasn't 100% from me before, but it is now 192 bit, 12 gigabytes. And again, I know other people have been leaking that as well. I'm not claiming this is exclusive or something. Um, but, anyways, from discussions with sources, it sounds like this could actually come in at 350 or lower. And then that would just be the top card. There would, of course, be cut-down versions of Navi 22. And I'm told there are at least two cut-down models. Although I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. I know there is a 10 gigabyte 155 watt card on AMD's professional roadmap that all all evidence points to being a cut down Navi 22. So I would say there could be three models for gamers, but one of but maybe not. Maybe there's just two, and then there's a professional one. And I've been told directly that AMD is likely making some last minute changes to the RX 6700 to make it a more budget oriented option to more directly compete with the RTX 3060 and that it sounds kind of closer to a 5700 XT in performance than stronger than that. Uh, 150 to 180 watt TDP. And I think, again, it could be like a six gigabyte card below $300 um, positioned directly against the GA106 3060. So before moving on, what really is there left to say about the 6700 XT? Well... The most succinct way I would put it is this. Comparing the 6700 XT to the 3060 Ti is similar to comparing the RX 6800 non-XT to the 3080. It is a bit weaker, although I would argue not worlds weaker, maybe not even a full tier weaker than the 3080. I mean, there are games where they tie, uh, but, you know, 
for that overall weaker performance, you are given in return a decently lower price and a lot more VRAM. And again, I know the pricing thing is an issue right now, but AMD is showing concern that the 3060 Ti will hit its MSRP in quarter one. So it does seem like this is all temporary due to the unprecedented demand this quarter. And so indeed, if these marked up AIB prices are largely a result of the logistics issues going on right now, being passed on to the customers and being asked by AIBs to pay for some of them, as I discussed in my last video, then AMD needs to take the MSRP of the 3060 Ti seriously. They actually are shipping decent numbers of these cards. And if AIB is worried about not beating 3060 Ti performance and it hits 399, they do just kind of have to charge less. And actually, the good news is I think they can. Based on my estimated bomb cost of the 6700 XT of Navi 22, and this comes from but the latest 7 nanometer wafer costs, which are approaching $9,000 per wafer. It used to be over $10,000, by the way. And the per gigabyte GDR6 costs provided to me by AIBs, yeah, I think they can get that 45% markup Lisa Sue tax and still sell the 6700 XT for $330, perhaps. Certainly for $350. And so at this point, I'm leaning towards the 6700 XT being a bit stronger than the 5700 XT, but not world stronger. But then at the same time, being a bit cheaper and having more VRAM. And... You know, when it comes to the performance, at the end of the day, you kind of got to point out that it's not as clear cut as many people would have you believe it is. Based on the latest benchmarks I've seen, the 2080 is only like 8.5% better than the 5700 XT anyways. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe nothing does really change based on how I said things a couple months ago. It sounds like the 6700 XT basically will be around TU-104, you know, 2080, 2080 super performance, around there for a reasonable price for that performance and more VRAM. And yeah, I guess that's really interesting then what AMD is doing, that they're kind of abandoning the upper mid range. This was something discussed in depth in a patron only podcast recently that we really had a lot of enthusiastic comments come in from the community. We really enjoyed it. What we talked about how is when you look at AMD, if these performance estimates for Navi 22 are true, then it's clear this has to be intentional. You know, a 40 CU card that kind of focuses on keeping costs down and giving you enough VRAM around $300, but then a massive 80 compute unit card that brings you new levels of performance, you can't tell me AMD isn't somewhat intentionally abandoning this new, I would argue dubiously useless higher mid-range uh, area that the 3060 Ti is paving its way into. And honestly, I would think that these two areas to focus on, sub 400 and above 600, are the obvious ones. I mean, if you're upgrading your PC in the next six months, I would assume you're doing it for one of two reasons. The first reason is you just want some super card, like the 6800 XT, that gives you performance you couldn't get last year and you're willing to pay for it. Or you're probably willing to not... Or, or you're probably looking to avoid buying a new console, but you want to keep up with them. Look, even if your PC doesn't exceed the consoles in every game, well, whatever. You want to spend less than a console, and so you get something for like 300 bucks that can keep up with them. That seems to be what Navi 22 is focusing on. Um, so yeah, I mean, that sounds like it could be a decent Polaris successor if you would adjust for inflation, especially... With tips coming in to me that the cut down 6700 could be focused firmly on being a budget card, something below 300. That's exciting. I think more exciting actually than something that's like an almost 2080 Ti for more than 400. I would rather have something around a 2080 Super that allows people to spend half as much as a console to just keep gaming as well as a console. And at least for now, that is what it seems the point of Navi 22 and the 6700 XT is relative 
to the 3060 Ti. But of course, things could fluctuate a bit by 10% in terms of overall performance, and I can't promise AMD will do what's right or even what's smart with their pricing, although I suspect they will. So if new information comes to me, I'll of course get it out to you. So subscribe to Moore's Laws Dead and ring the bell button so you don't miss any of these updates. And of course, share these videos with your friends. Subscribe to Broken Silicon on your preferred podcast app. That's where so much of the news and information I give out comes from. And if you have the extra money, but only if you do, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get exclusive ad-free access to podcasts every week, including exclusive ones like the one I just mentioned, where we talk with the community about what really makes a more expensive card worth the money or not. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.